So welcome back everyone, Triple M here. Today's video, I wanted to show you my security setup for my house. Now a week ago, I released a video showing you the switch, a new switch that I purchased, and it was essentially for this purpose. So what was unique about the switch is that it had PoE on eight of the ports. The other eight ports were standard, and with the eight PoE ports or power over ethernet, I was able to power my cameras that needed that power. So the aim of this was for me to pull all the cameras off my current NVR, which is a little bit loud and, and was not compatible with the new cameras that I purchased. And I wanted to really consolidate and put it all in one system. Now my Synology NAS, this is a DS620 Slim. I was able to dedicate that particular network that storage to my security system. So this video, I'm gonna show you guys what's needed, how to set it up, how to add your cameras. And uh, if you have any questions about this, just drop it in the comment section below. So of course, if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button in the top right, smash the notification bell. Of course, if you have any questions, drop it in the comment section below. Now the software that I'm using on my Synology NAS is called Surveillance Station. Now this is built into any Synology NAS that you have. All you need to do is go to the package center. You're gonna search for Surveillance Station. And right there, download it, takes a couple minutes and then this icon will appear. So once you get the icon there, guys, go ahead and launch it. It will launch in a separate window essentially. It's almost like a VM for your NAS, a second VM. So this is the main interface of your NAS, but once you launch Surveillance Station, this is the interface that you'll see. So most of this stuff is customizable, guys. These are stuff that I added myself and you can kind of drag and drop, move it around where you need it. So it's pretty cool. So these main icons will pop up. So you have your live view, your timeline, IP camera, recordings, application center, and your help button. So we're gonna start out with the live view. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that whenever you launch anything within this interface, it will pop up in the window right here and you can essentially minimize it or you can go ahead and right click and close it out. Uh, essentially just like the desktop of your computer. So here's the live view guys. These two cameras up top, these are Ampress camera. These are 4K cameras that I pulled from my existing um, NVR and I decided to add it all to my Synology NAS. Now these are recorded in 1080p and these are in 4k so um, one thing I should mention is that the top two cameras these are pan tilt zoom so I can essentially move them around and I'll show you guys that in a little bit uh, these four are fixed if I go to this one I can do a double click and um, when you move to either side you can see that you can move the camera around just using your mouse um, it's not really smooth. I'd rather use the buttons up here to move them around. Feel like I get more control. Also have the option to zoom out, zoom in. And at the bottom of that, you do have a lot more settings. So you can do instant playback, you can edit. So within the edit menu, it'll bring you to the IP camera view. And I'm gonna get into that in a little bit. So, all right, here's your pan till zoom. You can take a snapshot You can drag and zoom, pause. Turn the volume on and off. You have manual record, stream settings, and you do have the information of your camera. Get back out of it. <laughs> it's kind of tricky sometimes. Um, but like I said, both of these, I can move it around even when I'm in the main interface. This is the garage. All right, so these are the pan tilt zoom camera. Look at there's a spider going right there. That's pretty weird. Let's move it down, see if I can catch it. That's my gym. I thought I saw it. Anyway, getting a little bit off track. Let me just move that back up. All right, so that's about where I want it. So one thing you'll notice is that when I actually jump to the 4K cameras, you'll, you're gonna see the difference. So you can see how much smoother that looks. I can use the scroll of the mouse, zoom in, and you can hear the lens on the inside. And what's so good about this is that the quality doesn't change. Because you have 4K, you have so much more to play with, guys. I think it's max zoom right there, but you can see it kind of smooth itself out 
and you do hear the, the actual lens on the inside. That's pretty cool. So with the surveillance station, you also have a very cool application that works when you're on the go. And this works almost flawlessly, guys. You do have the option to set up your notifications, your motion detection, and it will alert you uh, when something's going on in your house. So let me just launch the DS cam, which is associated with surveillance station. So here's a look at the front camera. And let me just hit back. You can see I have the two right there. I can scroll back to the other cameras. Those are the two uh, rear cameras. And here are the other two. So very cool that within, even within the application on your phone, you do have those functions still, guys. So I can move it. And you can check out both cameras, both um, views that it is actually moving. So pretty cool. You also have the timeline where you can go back. All right. And on the bottom, this is where your notifications are. So when you see the blue, that means that something was going on that it picked up. So we should have some movement. All right. So it looks like we have the lights on in the garage. So that means that someone was in there and looked like that's me moving stuff around. Like I said, the application on the phone is pretty nice. Below that, you can see your last event, your next event. You extend the scale, rewind, fix ratio. So you have a lot of cool options. And when you click on the three dots up top, you can actually change the view of what you're looking at. So right now I have two, but I can switch it to six. Go back live. All right, so there's the view for six. But like I said, a lot of cool options, a lot of things you can play with to make this work for you. And the best thing about this is that it's actually using the storage on your NAS to, to record all these events. The timeline application is there as well, so you can kind of do the same thing. Um, you see the notifications right here. You can kind of see that I'm moving stuff out of the car just like we saw before. Very functional whether you're using the application on a desktop or if you're using it on your mobile device. So another thing that's definitely worth uh, mentioning is the recording. So for anyone, this is where your videos will be stored, guys. They're stored in 30 minute increments and let's go ahead and launch it. All right, so here's a basic view which shows you what camera, uh, depending on how you name it, shows you the time. Uh, like I said, they are in 30 minute increments and this is where you actually go. You can go by date. You can actually play with the date. If you need to go back to review an incident, this is where that will live. So if I wanted to play this clip from the driveway, all right, so there it is. I can skip ahead. It does record audio as well. You can actually change the speed. All right, so if you wanted to play a little bit faster, you can go ahead and adjust that. Shows you the time. Uh, so 1655 of 30 minutes. And from here, you can download it if you guys wanted to hold on to that clip. If you guys need to report something to the police, you can go ahead and do so. You go into the settings and um, do some other things. So pretty cool. You can also uh, make this full screen, but a lot of different options. And if something is there that's very important that you don't want overwritten, you can go ahead and select the lock. Uh, like I said, this might come in handy if you have an incident that you need to uh, essentially report to the police. So uh, you can change the view as well. So maybe you like that view better. Or if you dig down into the category, you can select by camera. So from here, you can see I have the six cameras, guys. So back door, back door left, driveway, front door. And it shows you how many recordings it has next to the camera. So for me, uh, these two cameras were the first ones that were on. I put these on the system and uh, like I said, 30 minute increments. So pretty cool, shows you all the information you need, locks it away. And the good thing about this is that it goes directly off your Synology NAS. Now on my Synology NAS, you can see of all the recordings I have, I'm only occupying about 75 gigs and I have about a terabyte. So I have a lot of room to play with. I'm gonna let this run out, uh, see how long of recording I can get, but you can always buy larger drives and that will uh, give you more storage or recording time, essentially. Now the IB camera is where you go ahead and add your cameras. So these are all the cameras that I have. So by default, Synology's NAS come with two licenses. And by default, Synology NAS come with two licenses. So if I click on the main menu right here, I go to licenses. And you can see this is a standard two that came with my NAS. Now I did have to reach out to Synology. They were very cool about sending out 
four additional licenses for me to do this demo so big shout out to them four licenses are right there they sell them in different packs so if you want to buy a four or eight license pack you can go ahead and do so so pretty straightforward you can show the key uh, you can only use licenses on one device at a time so if this device dies or whatever the case is i can go ahead and switch it over to another nas but you can't use it on multiple devices at the same time so you can delete a license you can add a license right here if you go ahead and purchase one so um nice little setup that they have uh they do sell them on amazon i try to leave a couple links they're not that expensive in my opinion and they work pretty well so the added cameras again pretty straightforward you're gonna launch your ip camera application i'm gonna click add camera and usually I do a quick setup because I can go back in later and edit some of those settings and I'll show you what's available in a little bit so I'll do a quick setup so from here you can name your device you can put in the IP address if you know the brand and model of your device you can go ahead and do so I do recommend actually looking at this list and seeing what's compatible out of the box so that way you can make a good decision if you're planning to purchase camera so here's a full list of the supported cameras for your surveillance station now um, they do have the brand names right there so you can go and do so but you can do user defined or unviv compatible cameras now unviv is basically just a global standardization of i guess streaming products streaming cameras whatever the case is so if you have a device or a camera that's unviv compatible you should be able to add it with this menu so for me the easiest way to do this is just to hit the search button. What it'll do is look on your network, see what you have. So you can see I have two MCrest camera that pops up. So you guys are probably wondering where are the rest of the cameras that's showing. So Synology supported cameras here and you do have general interface or on this. So if I click here, here's the rest of the cameras. So the six cameras are right here. And I, like I said, these are already added, but um, you will just essentially click on it. Click OK. Give it a name. Put in the username and password so uh, some cameras it might be admin admin or admin password or if you set a password i uh, should be able to um, use that to authenticate and also for most cameras if you put in this in your web address while you're in your house you should be able to log into the interface and you can essentially set those passwords right there so keep that in mind so i'm just going to exit out of this so once your camera is added you do have a lot of options as far as your settings so if you right click hit edit device settings recording settings live view settings optimization event detection so a lot of different settings to play with guys you can set it by camera by surveillance station whatever your preference is uh, device settings if i go to video gives you the stream profile which you can play with your audio format video format all right resolution is something i play with a little bit so if I click right here, you can see, uh, depending on what your camera resolution is, you should be able to play with it. You can see this one is set to 4K. It is um, streaming live in 4K right now. However, for a camera like the first two, these are only 1080p. So if you hit edit and go to your video, resolution should max out at 1080p. And let me go ahead and set that. Usually I up the frame rate a little bit. Maybe I'll do 16 frames a second just because it is, um, Streaming at 1080p, so it shouldn't be that bad. And I'll do that for the second camera as well. So the video, all right, so that one's already set. And look like that one's set to 30 frames per second. So I'll just leave those as is. So that's basically for the surveillance station for Synology. Um, this one is still updating settings, but definitely want to hear what you guys think about this. I think uh, if you plan this properly, you get your NAS, you get your drives for it, and you get the licenses that you need. Um, this is a self-managed security system that um, that you can play with and uh, customize how you want it. So I definitely want to hear what you guys think about this. I've also done a, a, a intro to Surveillance Station. I'll go ahead and put the link to that video in the description. Uh, once again, uh, drop your comments in the comment section below, your questions. Big shout out to Synology for sending the license pack out to me to review. And like I said, this is compatible with their Synology NAS. I'll go ahead and leave a link to this NAS that I'm using as well as some of their other popular network attached storage. If you guys have any questions about this, drop it in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.